So now we're going to set up the Braintree drop-in UI. So essentially this will allow us to literally drop in the payment form that we saw in the first part of this series and we'll include the validation. And what's great is that when we actually submit our form, we'll then get a token back, which we can use to charge that payment method. And we'll be looking at actually processing payments with Braintree in the next part. But for now, let's focus on the front end side of this. And if you head over to the Braintree website, you can go ahead and find the documentation for this here. I'm currently just on the drop-in UI landing page. So you can test this out here if you want to, but we're gonna head straight over to the documentation and we're gonna look at how we do this. So obviously this is done with JavaScript, so we're gonna to need to pull in the uh, Braintree JavaScript file for this. And we just wanna make sure that we're on JSV2 SDK. So let's just scroll down. I'd encourage you just to read this through just to familiarize yourself with how it works. But essentially with the client side implementation, this is all we have to do. So this might look a little bit strange because there's not a lot here, but essentially we just have an element here with an ID. And then what we do is we take the um, client token, passing it into this method, and then we just give the container. So you can see we have drop in container, drop in container, and then we literally just have our uh, payment form there from Braintree. So there's a little bit of setup we need to do on our end just because we're gonna be injecting scripts and we only want this on our order page. We don't have to load this for every single page. It doesn't make sense to do this. So let's start out by just heading over to our uh, base template. So what we're gonna do is allow scripts to be injected down here based on blocks within Twig. So all we do here is create a block called scripts. And all this means eventually is that we can inject scripts in here from a particular template. So that template happens to be order index. So down here we can create a new block. So let's just start this block out and just kind of kick the process off. I'm gonna say block scripts. And then down here, let's end that block. So this is where our brain tree uh, drop-in code will go in order to uh, place this on the for on, on our form. So where do we actually place our payment? Well, what we can do is just before we uh, finish everything off here, so all of our other details, let's create a header here for payment. Let's create a HR here. And then down here, let's just create a payment div, so div of the class of, uh, or an idea of payment. So this is where our drop-in UI will go. So we need to do a little bit of setup because we need our client token uh, from the back end to be able to actually do this. So the, you can see how easy it is to actually integrate this, but we need to get this client token from our server. So to do this, we need to pull in the Braintree PHP client library. This will allow us to authenticate and also charge a user. So if we install it now, we have it ready for the next part. So let's just pull this down and then we'll set up our configuration. We'll head back over to our sandbox to get all of that information. So let's do a composer require on Braintree, Braintree PHP, and we will wait for that to download. So now that's done, we have it available in our project, but we have a little bit of setup to do here. So, uh, well, not a lot at all, but if we go over to my user, remember this is where we have our public, our private keys. So if we head down to API keys, we will find if we go over to this key, which is the one that we're gonna be using, that we have that code example we saw earlier. So we can literally just copy this and go ahead and paste it into our bootstrap file. This will just allow us to uh, essentially just authenticate with the API. So let's pull this in. Now, although we're pulling our credentials directly into our code for this series, what I'd recommend you do is within production, actually set this up so you can store your configuration in environment variables. So essentially what this will entail is using a library like php.env. And the instructions on this repo are really clear. Uh, it gives you a good idea as to why you shouldn't store sensitive credentials in your code. This is pretty obvious. If you are pushing this up to some kind of version control like GitHub, then obviously these will be accessible uh, to everyone. So go ahead and once you have finished the series, read this through and with your Braintree and your database connection 
credentials, you can store these in a separate .env file. And what you're also going to want to make sure is that if you are using version control, you want to use git ignore to ignore this file. Now, essentially all that will happen here is that within that file that you create, you will go ahead and load in all of this configuration. And rather than hard coding the values just here, you'll access them from that configuration file. And this also means that you can have different settings across different servers. Maybe on local development, you want to use your sandbox. Maybe in production, well, you would want to use your production credentials. And that's the same for your database as well as Braintree. So go ahead and once you have finished the series, before you push your code to production, if you are pushing it to production, make sure that you check this library out and uh, it's really simple to use and go ahead and get this set up so you're nice and secure. But now we actually have all of this set up. The only thing that we need to do is just at the top here, use this like so. So we're going to be using this PHP library to actually make payments. So now we have it all set up and ready to go. But what we want to do to keep this nice and structured is create a controller uh, for our client token. So all we want to do is create a new file in here. You can do this however you want, but I find it keeps it nice and tidy if we create a controller for it. So let's say Braintree controller, and let's just pull over our home controller so we have the structure there. And we'll go and change this over again. So this will be Braintree controller. And we don't need these uh, we might need our response actually. Yeah, we do because we need to respond with JSON. We don't need our product obviously and we don't need Twix. We're not rendering any views. So inside of our Braintree controller, we want to create a token method which will go ahead and return our token. So into this, we can inject our response because we need to respond with JSON. And by the way, we'll be picking this up with an Ajax request. So it makes sense that we grab our token when that's come through, then we can go ahead and uh, render our drop in UI form. So now what we need to do to actually grab this token is Braintree client token generate. It's that easy and that will give us back the token that we need to put into that, uh, into that drop in UI code. So rather than do this, obviously that's not going to work. We need to actually return with some response. So if we just return here and we say response with JSON inside of here, let's say token, paste this in and we are done. So the only thing we need to do here is just use this up there and that's it. So let's create the root for this just so we can actually hit the URI and we will go down to the bottom and say app get Braintree token. And then in here, we'll say cart controllers Braintree controller. And we're accessing the token method. And we can go and set a name for this. So this will be Braintree.token. So this will be public, but that's absolutely fine because all we're doing is we're placing it on the page uh, with our JavaScript. So it's perfectly normal to go ahead and output this on the page. Uh, obviously, if we just head over to the documentation and refer to that, you can see that we're just literally putting our uh, client token in there. So that's fine. We get rid of that so we can check that this actually so let's works. Let's go over to so our bootstrap app file and let's get rid of that there. We don't need that. So there we go. So if we head over then to Braintree token, we will get back a JSON response with that token that we can place into there. So now that we have this, what we can do is make an Ajax request. And then once that's ready, we can uh, set up our UI, our drop in UI. So inside of our order form, this is where we want to make the Ajax request to our server. Once we have the token back, we can then actually go ahead and use it. So we know that we have jQuery pulled in, so we can go and say Ajax. And then we need to choose the URL, which is in here, path for Braintree token. So we're using that in there just so we don't have to hard code the URL. We have a type here of get. We have a data type that we're expecting back, which is JSON. jQuery is uh, clever enough to pick all this up, but of course we can enter it anyway. And then on success, we have a callback here, which will contain the data from that response. So in this case, we can do a console log 
on data just to see what happens. And obviously in here, we will wrap this in a script tag. That makes a lot more sense. So let's wrap this in a script tag. Okay, so now let's just indent this, head over to the order form, and let's go and bring up our console just to see uh, if everything was fine. So it looks like this is fine. We're getting an object back with that token. So we now have our Braintree client token. If we need to use it anywhere else, that's absolutely fine. It will work in exactly the same way. And uh, we have it there ready now. So now what we need to do is pull in the JavaScript from Braintree so we can actually use this. And this is braintree.js. So if we just head over to this and we come down to use the direct link, you can install this with Bower or NPM if you are eventually going to do this with this project. But for now, we'll go ahead and pull this in uh, with uh, the direct link. So we can pull this in on this page because we don't need it on any other page, at least not yet. And we'll pull this in there. Oh, it's already got the script tags for us. There we go. So now when we uh, get to the success part, all we need to do is if we refer back to the documentation over here, we just have this to do. So we just define the container, the client token, which we have now, and we just say that we want this to be a drop in form. So we just say Braintree setup. And then in here we say data.token, that's back from our request. We say drop in. And then in here with the uh, options object, we have container and that's just payment. So that's this here that we added, remember. So it is as simple as that. And we now have a form that we saw earlier. So if we just go down, you can see that's loading in there. And there we go. So there is our drop-in form. Remember, like I said, we can go ahead and enter a card number directly in here and everything else. And it's all nice and validated for us. Or we can go and choose to pay with PayPal. And then from this, what we can do is if we decide to change our payment method. So remember, we're working with the sandbox here. So we can just go ahead and proceed with this. Otherwise, what your customers will do is just enter their PayPal email address and password and it'll all be done. And they'll see this with their email. We can go ahead and change that. And we get this lovely um, selection here for the payment method we want to use. So really straightforward. So we now have our drop in UI on our page. But how do we grab the token that we're eventually going to use? Well, we're going to look at that in this part. And then in the next part, we're going to actually look at making a charge on the back end with the Braintree uh, PHP client library. So over in our order form, or at least our order controller, let's just close all of this off. Uh, when we actually create an order here, let's just put our validation back, by the way. We'll actually go and just do a, well, we'll kill the page and let's do a var dump on request get params. This will give us an array of all of the parameters. So if we fill out this order form, so in it, uh, no, we can, we can ignore these. So we'll ignore this for now, but we'll just focus on this. So let's go and enter a card number. If you want to use a test card number, you can find them in Braintree's documentation. I always just use 4242 uh, repeated, but obviously for different payment method testing, you have different card numbers. And let's just enter some information in here and then let's go and click place order. So that will go ahead and submit everything through. And as well as of all the other details that we will have, remember we have these validated, we have a payment method nonce. So this is what's used to represent the payment method that has just been entered. And we can use that to make a charge with a specific amount. And if you thought integrating the drop in UI was easy, making a charge is equally as easy. It's just as the case of passing this through with a, uh, a price. So we're going to handle actual processing payments on the back end in the next part. And then we can go on to finish up our shopping cart experience. I want to give a shout out to our friends at Braintree Payments. In future, there could be a whole new way to pay. Braintree's full stack payment platform is easily adaptable. So with just 10 lines of in-app code, it's easy to update to support a new payment method when it arrives. No staying up all night with complicated recoding, no stressing about staying ahead with your payments. Braintree Payments is here to help. You can find out more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.